to welcome to this very first live stream on the Delish Diet page. This is a new page for me. Um, so if you would like, you can go to my other page. It's called Nutrition Wisdom with Sherry Rothwell and um, follow up with some more videos on the Delish Diet and natural, permanent, sustainable and pleasurable weight loss. Um, I decided to actually create an entirely new page just devoted to the Delish Diet and the topic of weightless, um, being weightless and weight loss. So if you're new here, please feel free to join my weightless group. It's a, a Facebook group that's associated with this page. And it's for people who want to learn more about losing not just the physical weight, but the emotional weight too. So all of the um, Delish Daily videos, live streams are going to be broadcasted here from this page. But if you want to get into more like mindset and emotional work and things like that, then I recommend joining that free waitlist group where I go more into detail about the emotional side of carrying too much weight. But as for this show, we're mostly going to be focusing on, you know, everything to do with weight loss, the information, new information that's coming out um, stories. I'm going to be sharing stories. I'm going to be giving you inspiration, knowledge, and lots of tips as well. So um, welcome to this video where I'm going to share with you today what the four keys I think are to losing weight and what any diet that's worth this shirt should include. Now, unfortunately, um, in today's world, we have a lot of fad diets that do not include most of these things. And we have been basically programmed with this idea that if we want to lose weight, all we have to do is restrict calories and exercise. And while that works for a 20 something year old or somebody with a generally healthy metabolism who is, you know, maybe just not, you know, living the best lifestyle, what it who it doesn't work for are people who have hormonal imbalances, really high cortisol, a lot of stress and insulin resistance. Now, I'm not going to go into all those things, obviously, in this um, live stream because we don't have the time for it. My intention is to do these every single day, at least three weeks out of every single month from Monday to Friday. And um, I will cover a bunch of different topics. So you're welcome to message me on something that's up for you, any questions that you have that you'd like for me to cover. But in today's um, live stream, what I want to do is share with you why I think these four aspects are critical uh, to actually losing weight. And I'm going to be going for the rest of the week into each one individually. So let's just take um, a wide, um, a wide little journey <laughs> into this today, and then we'll go deeper in the upcoming sessions. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Sherry Rothwell. And I, five years ago, found myself obese as a holistic nutritionist, eating a whole foods, primarily vegetarian diet. And throughout these last five years, I had to figure out how the heck does that happen to somebody who eats natural foods? Um, so, you know, if you're sitting in that boat, if you don't understand why you eat healthy and you can't seem to lose the weight, then you're in the right place because I have the answers for you. And not only do I have the answers for you, but they are answers that will actually make it so that you can bring your health back into balance and maintain your results permanently. I've been in your shoes. I understand the, um, you know, the psychological aspects of being overweight as much as just the impact of, you know, how your body feels. I've been, you know, on the, uh, well, let's just put it this way. A lot of times when you go to diet and um, fitness gurus, it can be sometimes hard to relate to them if you don't have that natural desire or you haven't built the desire for exercise and you're not somebody who likes to do things like count calories or carbs or fat grams or protein, etc. And it can be really like, you can kind of feel like, Okay, obviously, these people know what they're doing because they are fit and they are not overweight. However, when they project their experience into yours, then you might find that you start to doubt that you can get the results that they've gotten because you don't have the same situation. You aren't in the same. They're not in the same shoes as you are. I used to be in your shoes. 
I was 176 pounds on a five foot four inch frame. And I am somebody who doesn't like exercising for the sake of exercising. I know a lot of people really enjoy fitness. Um, there are certain things now that I enjoy fitness wise, but when I was overweight, I hated all of it. And if anybody would have told me that I needed to exercise to get thin, um, or count calories, it would just have been impossible. I don't want to be a mathematician around my food. So um, I had to learn what was out of balance and bring it back into balance and how to eat in a way that I could maintain my weight. Well, first of all, lose it and then maintain it. And I have maintained it for five years now. Okay, so this is you know something that is a major issue that people um, generally have the experience of trying diets and they work, and then going back to your old weight. Um, and then they don't work anymore, obviously, because you're not doing it, right? So um, that's one of the biggest problems with the diets that exist out there is they're not maintainable for life. And so if you can't maintain what you did to lose the weight, then how are you expecting that you're going to maintain the weight loss, right? So it's kind of like, we know this intellectually, but we have been um, basically brainwashed and programmed into the calories in, calories out type of perspective. And we know it works to a certain extent, right? Because any of us can do it. We can, you know, unless you're really hormonally um, in a state of havoc, some people can't even do that to lose weight, right? Like they, they restrict their calories. They run five days a week. They can't lose a pound. Um, but for most people who are not in that state of hormonal havoc, what they'll find is that they are um, able to lose some weight. And what that does is it basically creates a pattern in your brain in which you, even though intellectually your conscious mind knows that that's not maintainable and all that effort that you're gonna put into it is gonna backfire after you stop the diet, we still do them over and over again, right? So successful weight loss comes down to having a paradigm shift around um, what it's actually going to take to lose the weight permanently. So I'm just going to check. I want to check on one of my other pages here just to make sure that this is broadcasting and I can be heard. Okay, let's see here. Uh, yep. There what it's actually going to take just to lose sure. the weight permanently. One time I did a live stream and for some reason the volume didn't pick up and I talked for like, I don't know, 40 minutes. <laughs> to have a recording with like absolutely zero sound. So I've learned to check now. All right. So what are the key aspects of a diet that make it worth its shirt? So the first thing, in my opinion, is that it's natural. If the diet that you're doing is uh, based on artificial foods and processed foods, you have to realize that you know, while it may be making it easy for you to, you know, take a shake or take a bar or whatever to maintain the diet within the, you know, time period that you've committed to it. Unfortunately, the impact of the toxicity of what's in those products, um, a lot of times there's soy in them, which can wreak havoc on your hormones and um, just not like missing the, the natural uh, micronutrients that come in your whole foods has an impact on your whole entire body's health that will have the eventual effect of slowing your metabolism down, right? So we get really stuck on this idea of like macronutrients and, you know, our carbs, our protein and our fat. And as long as we're getting those, um, you know, we assume that we're going to be you know, doing what it takes to lose weight. However, people who are able to eat in moderation, anything they want are already in a state of health and they are able to um, have that flexibility in their diet because their metabolism is healthy. And in order to be healthy, you have to have a healthy diet and eating a bunch of protein bars and um, meal replacements is not going to give you the natural whole food nutrition that would come when you actually make food from scratch. Now, a lot of people are not into cooking and um, 
find that that's one of the difficult aspects of taking an approach that's natural. But I'm going to invite you to consider that maybe something actually needs to shift in your life around that, that maybe you have some mindset blocks in the way in your relationship to cooking that are making it so that you can't have what you want and maybe actually keeping you separate from some pleasure in life that you could be having. And sometimes we focus on a um, something that we say we believe is the reason why we can't have what we want, but it's actually not the cause of it. So I invite uh, my clients to consider that if they don't like to cook and they can't set the time aside to do it, that maybe it's actually uh, underneath there, there's a deeper cause, like, um, something to do with maybe um, not managing their time properly or over scheduling themselves or not prioritizing their own well-being, giving themselves the the um, having the self-worth to believe that they're worth that time of self-care. You know, we're all out there, you know, talking about self-care. But the fact that we need to eat is a built in mechanism for us to give ourselves self-care. We don't have to go to the gym to get self-care. You can stay in your kitchen and literally prepare your food with love. So there may be an um, changing your relationship to food and to food preparation could be actually one of the paradigm shifts that need to happen in order to have a lifestyle that allows you to maintain your weight loss permanently. If you have to eat processed foods and buy, um, you know, foods from a diet company forever, it's not going to be, not only are you going to, you know, it's, it's scientifically formulated, right? So science is very um, immature when it comes to nutrition. Did you know that we didn't even know the vitamins existed until 1911? Okay. So all of the research that is in existence has a, like a large majority of it has gone towards how to treat disease, not how to get healthy or stay healthy, right? So can you imagine how much knowledge we would have about nutrition right now? It's the same amount of effort that has been put into scientific research on disease mechanisms and finding cures where it was actually put towards how to stay healthy or how to get healthy if you're not healthy, how much more we would actually know about nutrition. I mean, it would be mind boggling. So, you know, we scientifically formulate foods. We are missing foods impact in, in its natural synergy. So we're not getting all of those phytonutrients, the live enzymes, um, the, the food being fresh, okay, um, being more alkaline, right? I, I've tried those protein shakes. I've tried those, you know, protein bars, not that I've ever done diets that include those things. I've just, you know, I used to work in a health food store. So, you know, I've tried all these things. Um, they're just so, I just think about it like a protein bar. It's like, first of all, I don't know why, but poor quality whey protein smells like pig barn to me. <laughs> um, so it doesn't taste that good. It's super drying, like dehydrates you, right? Um, you can taste, it's like chalky and like it doesn't really taste like real food. It tastes like, to me, it's kind of like the human version of like cat or processed dog food. Personally, that's how I feel about it. I'm sorry if yeah, someone's watching this and they own a protein company, protein bar company or <laughs> um, or uh, protein drink. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's ways to make these things better. Um, one of the things would be to... Uh, include some sort of like enzymes or something like that um, that are just not making you feel like that acidicness, right? Like it, it reminds me of like eating, you know, on a road trip and getting some, you know, processed food from 7-Eleven or something like that, where you're like on the trip and you keep eating this processed food and you start to feel like tired and heavy and acidic. And that is what I find those types of products, the impact on your body. They may balance out your macronutrients for the time being and allowing you to lose weight. But are you going to eat like that forever? Do you want your results to be based on eating artificial foods? Okay, there's a lot of love that goes into home prepared food that also impacts your health. 
Okay, so to me, natural weight loss is uh, based on eating whole, a whole foods diet, that's a start. And for some people, if you just go from eating the standard North American diet and getting off these processed foods, these protein bars and shakes and pills and all these different things and onto um, a whole foods diet, which automatically reduces the toxic load that goes into your body and boosts your nutrient status because the macronutrients that you're eating now are full of all these phytonutrients, all of these vitamins and minerals found naturally uh, in um, a synergistic way that your body recognizes and can easily absorb. And suddenly, as a natural sequela of getting healthier, you just start to lose weight. I've had many people that I've worked with who've not come to me for weight loss. They've come to me for other health issues. And once we get their body back into balance around the certain thing that they were struggling with, the certain symptoms that they came to me for, the natural result of that is also a 10 to 15 pound weight loss without even trying. That was not even their main concern. Okay, so the first step is that the diet that you want to embrace should be natural. Again, I'm going to go into more detail about this in upcoming live streams this week. Okay, so the second part of it is that it should be sustainable. Let's talk about, well, actually, let's go to pleasurable before sustainable, because essentially, in order to make something sustainable, it has to be pleasurable. Nobody wants to be on a diet that is making them feel like there is no pleasure in eating. There's a reason that uh, food tastes good when you eat it. We are meant to enjoy life. We're not meant to eat food that just helps us maintain weight. There's so much to the process of eating that has nothing to do with even nutrition that is actually nourishing to us. And one example of this is when you are eating with your family members or people you love, you actually produce more of the hormone oxytocin, which is a, it's the love hormone. It's the hormonal counterpart to the experience of feeling love. So we're nourished by our food in that way. So that's pleasure, right? Just eating with other people, creating an atmosphere of connection around food. But then there's the actual taste of the food. How many people believe that if they were to stay thin, that they that means they have to give up all their pleasures? And you know what? A lot of the approaches make it sound like that, right? Like a lot of people are just eating a lot of chicken breast and a lot of broccoli to maintain their weight loss or to have weight loss. Okay. And I'm not saying that broccoli isn't good or that chicken isn't good, but you need to have a variety of foods in your diet in order to experience all the pleasure that exists. There is probably, there's some foods that you would actually need to eliminate from your diet for your diet to just be natural, okay? Then there are certain foods that you have to eliminate from your diet in order to lose weight, okay? I'm not gonna get into that right now. However, if you are to let go of all of the pleasurable foods in your life right now. Just imagine that you can never eat them again. Well, of course, if a diet gives you that feeling like you're never going to be able to eat the foods you love again, you're going to fail from the start. I mean, you know it. We all know it. So food is about pleasure, but there's a whole bunch of foods you've probably never tried before that you could derive pleasure from. But if you grew up on the standard North American diet, you don't even know all the foods that are available to you that you could be eating that are way more delicious than the ones you're eating now. Okay, so again, if you open your paradigm, like I mentioned with um, uh, getting connected back to and relating differently to food preparation and to cooking. When you switch your mindset at that point, suddenly you actually open the door to so many different delicious foods you have never tried. So I remember when I was a young teenager, I thought in order to get skinny, I'm going to have to eat carrot sticks and celery and lettuce. And who wants to just eat that, right? So I really believed that there was just really no hope. I was either going to have to like starve myself and eat really boring foods 
Um, or I was just going to give up and eat at McDonald's and eat chips and chocolate bars and grilled cheese sandwiches and chicken burgers. Okay. Like, I mean, that was my diet. And, uh, later when I became, uh, conscious of whole foods through actually getting sick, cause that's how most of us, a lot of us get on the path. I never imagined I would ever be here t- speaking to you about this. Um, but I got sick and I had to heal myself. And in that process, I learned about a new paradigm about whole foods and, and living a, a natural lifestyle. And that's what I needed to do to heal myself. I was shocked at how much more variety of foods I was eating and how much more delicious they were than any of the junk food that I had been eating. But here's the thing. Junk food tastes good. Do you even want to commit yourself to a diet that is going to not allow you to have any of the, you know, junk food pleasures that exist out there. Most people don't even want to live a life like that. Even if you could add all these amazing pleasurable foods, you don't want to have to give up certain things. Okay. So any diet that's worth shirt is going to be something that will give you some leeway to include, you know, some certain things that maybe you just don't want to have to totally give up. Okay and have room for them and show you how you can actually keep them in your diet and still maintain your weight loss that you've achieved as well as maintain your health. And I will talk more about this this week um, as I go through in full detail these aspects of a diet that's worth its shirt. Okay, So we've covered natural and we're working on pleasurable right now. Okay, so there are foods that you are eating right now that you think that you're going to have to give up forever in order to have the body that you want. I uh, invite you to come on to one of the live streams this week. Just stay um, on. Make sure you like this page um, and stay tuned. I'm going to be posting um, today um, more detail. So probably what I'll do is I'll do um, more detail about natural tomorrow. And then I'll do pleasurable on, let's see, Wednesday. Okay, we'll do natural on Tuesday. We'll do Wednesday pleasurable. Okay, so we'll go more into that and I'll I'll share with you how you can do that. Um, And then, okay, so, so the next aspect here is that the diet has to be sustainable. So I believe that having um, a dietary approach that brings you to optimal health. And as a natural result of that, you lose weight based on whole foods that you can find in nature. That is a sustainable diet. Okay. Cause you can actually make that happen for yourself without having to rely on uh, the industrial complex. Okay. If your diet relies on all of these foods that require corporations to make for you things that you can't just grow in your backyard, then you are in a difficult position and it's actually unsafe. I think it's unsafe to not know how to um, grow and prepare your own food. Now I'm not saying that the delish diet requires you to grow all of your own food. Okay. But it does require that you learn some cooking. I am currently in the process of creating a module in the e-course to help people who don't like to cook or to also help those of us, and I'm included, who sometimes don't feel like cooking, okay? What I notice actually is in my personal experience is in my um, menstrual cycle, there's at least a week right before I bleed where I don't feel like cooking, okay? So I'm gonna um, be adding that to the course, sharing with you guys how you can actually get through that week and still stay on the diet, not go off of it, and um, feel totally nourished and eat for keeping your hormones happy, which is one of the keys um, to letting go of the weight permanently. And it's one of the things that stops people from being able to lose weight and have stubborn weight gain. Okay, so sustainable. So if it's not pleasurable, then it's not sustainable either, right? Because if you don't experience joy from your food, then you know, you're not gonna stick with it. Let's face it. There's a lot of different reasons why we eat and some of it is for emotional reasons, right? to give ourselves instant pleasure even. 
Um, and so, you know, in my program, what I help people do is find foods that they can eat when they want to eat emotionally, they're still not going to cause them to gain weight. Okay. And then as when you're working with me as a private client, we actually dive deeply into the emotional reasons why you might want to fill yourself up with food or give yourself a quick boost of happiness through things like sugar or pleasure. Um, and what, and what's driving that emotional eating essentially. And that's different for each person. But in the meantime, you still physiologically, your body, if you choose the right foods, I call it better binging or blissful binging. Um, you know what, at least you can eat those foods without having guilt after, and you don't have to um, gain weight because of it, right? Like we, we just bypass the whole thing and go straight to the right foods. Um, again, we'll talk more about these things as we go on. And like I said earlier, if you have any specific things that you want me to cover in the show, please message me because my intention is to do these every single day, five days a week, three weeks, every single month. Um, so that is my intention. And uh, it will really help me to do that, to deliver this material. If you um, connect with me, tell me what you want and let me know that it's making a difference for you. That will motivate me because if I'm just sitting here talking to uh, myself <laughs> on the screen, um, I'm going to be less motivated, although I am committed <laughs> to showing up here and making this information readily available. There are so many people out there who are suffering needlessly. OK, like when I go to Starbucks and I order my whipping cream with um, espresso on top and I see somebody ordering a skinny latte who's overweight, I feel bad. I'm like, oh my God, I have to get this out here. Like I have to, I have to be out there, you know, teaching this information so that it becomes mainstream. So people aren't making choices that are against their, um, their, what they desire, right? Like a skinny latte is not going to get you skinny. Okay. So anyways, let's, I can go into that more. <laughs> uh, let me know if you want to know why, you know, I eat tons of fat and I'm thin and people are eating low fat foods and ordering skinny lattes and can't lose weight. Hmm. There's something to learn about that. Okay. So sustainable. So we've covered that in order for a diet to be sustainable, it needs to be natural and it needs to be pleasurable. Okay. Or you just won't want to do it. Now the final aspect is that you want it to be permanent, right? If you lose weight, you want to have shifted so many things physiologically and paradigm wise that you no longer struggle with this issue anymore in your life. That's the goal. Okay. That's not going to happen without a paradigm shift. Okay. You thinking differently about things and actually making permanent lifestyle changes and having changes in the way you choose food. And this does not come down to willpower. I am not talking about willpower, even remotely. Okay. Once you have the paradigm shift, it becomes easy. Okay. And that's why I'm here um, to help you have that paradigm shift. That's why I have the Delish Diet eCourse. That's why I have now just started the Delish Diet group coaching program okay, and class series. If you're interested in learning more with me about this and getting some um, personalized support and being part of our inner community of um, people who are doing the Delish Diet lifestyle, then message me and we'll just get on, um, uh, what's it called, Zoom and have a chat together and find out what the best um, option is for you to learn more. So, okay, here is the biggest thing that I, um, I personally struggle with as a nutritionist to get the point across to people. And it's partly because of what I said in the beginning of this live stream is that we've been brainwashed to think that we can do something impermanently and maintain permanent results by this whole calorie restriction over exercising stuff that will get us quick results, but few people can maintain, okay? Um, only the most neurotic people can maintain um, counting everything all day forever, and they're super stressed out about it, right? Um, so we don't want that. <laughs> we want something that you can do permanently. So 
if it's to be permanent, it's going to have to be natural. It's going to have to be sustainable and pleasurable to be permanent. So I want to leave you with that idea to think about. If you think that you can do something impermanently and then get permanent results, sit and ask yourself why you think that that would work um, for weight loss if it's not going to work anywhere else in your life, right? Like, you know, if you um, if you want to be have a good relationship with your kids, you can't once have a good day with them, right? Like where you're connected to them. You need to do that permanently to maintain that relationship. Look at it everywhere in your life. If you want to, you know, um, become, uh, rise the ladder in the, the, um, the, the occupation that you have or profession, you're not going to have to do just a good job one day, right? And think that that's going to like keep you going and everyone's going to be like, oh, that one day she was amazing. <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? Whatever you want to may have in your life permanently, you have to have some sort of strategy to permanently maintain it. So there we have it. These are the four things that I believe are essential if you would like to have permanent weight loss. If you would like to have your weight loss be um, something that you no longer struggle with, that you don't think about anymore, that you actually have a, a diet and lifestyle that allows you to maintain your results for life without having to think about them. Okay, so the Delish Diet is all that and more. Um, and you're going to be able to find out all about that by watching this show every single day at 8 a.m. Here on the Delish Diet Facebook page. So come back and um, please feel free to, like I said, message me if you have ideas for the show, things you'd like me to cover, burning questions that you have. Um, or if you would prefer to work more closely with me, then message me about that and we'll get on the phone, um, Zoom in particular. Uh, you know, we could do phone, but to be honest with you, most of what I deliver is by um, the uh, internet, um, using things, apps like zoom.us, which is like kind of like Skype, but you can get more people in the room than just two people. Um, so being slightly, cons um, being computer savvy to some degree is really going to help for you to be able to um, make use of um, the services that I offer. So uh, preferably by Zoom, although you can actually call in if you prefer the phone, you can use Zoom and um, still call in. And then we just don't see each other's face, um, but we can still be on that platform and you can join um, the group cl uh, classes or um, group um, coaching and things like that. So uh Thank you so much for watching this very first episode of the Delish Diet Daily Show. And I look forward to many to come. See you on the next one. Bye for now.